Assalamu alaikum and welcome to lecture number 9 for the course Corporate Social Responsibility which is MGD 610. Now we're discussing chapter number 3 and this lecture is in continuation to our last lecture. We're discussing the stakeholders theory and the learning objectives for this particular uh, course this particular chapter and this particular lecture is that we need to understand the definition of stakeholders we need to know why the stakeholders theory is extremely important with reference to corporate governance and corporate social responsibility we need to learn the taxonomy of stakeholders these are the three things that we've already already done in our last lecture we need to analyze the stakeholders relationship uh, and we need to see the holistic nature of the stakeholders relationship we need to think about the tangible and intangible manifestation that the business can have or its kya effect hota hai tangible terms mein or intangible terms mein bhi now this is where we start our lecture for today and this is where we ended our lecture number 8 as well now different people have come up with def different definitions of stakeholders but more or less each one of them mean the same thing simply stating a stakeholder is any individual or a group of individual who is going to have any interest in the organization now one person said that stakeholders is a group who can affect or is affected by the organization's purpose. So people who affect the organization's purpose or who get affected by the organization's purpose are what we call as your stakeholders. Similarly, somebody else said that stakeholders are people or individuals or groups as well who benefit from or are harmed by and whose rights are violated or respected by corporate actions. So that is what we also call as sta stakeholders, people who benefit uh, by the actions, who, are, who get benefits by the actions of the corporation or who get harmed by the actions of corporations or whose rights are violated or protected by corporate actions are also called as, as the stakeholders. The third person who came up with the definition of stakeholder that we are going to discuss today is people with the power to respond to negotiate and to change the strategic future of the organization. So there are groups, individuals who can respond, negotiate, and they have the power within themselves to change the strategic future of the organization is what we call as your uh, stakeholders. Now a more comprehensive definition of stakeholder is what this is. In simple terms, a stakeholder can be defined as individuals or groups who either get advantage or are disadvantaged by corporate decisions or actions. So they're just people, group of people or maybe individuals who either positively benefit or get negatively affected by corporate decisions or corporate action. So that's a more comprehensive definition of what we call as in a, or, or what we call as the concept of stakeholders. Now there's a certain classification of stakeholders as well or the stakeholders have been classified according to the, uh, the primary social stakeholders, the secondary social stakeholders, the primary non-social stakeholders and the secondary non-social stakeholders as well. Your primary social stakeholders are your investors. Uh, people who provide uh, or who financial supply the finances to the corporation they are your shareholders as well as your stakeholders employees including managers are also your primary social stakeholders local communities the, the communities which are around your factories and around your organization are also your primary social stakeholders suppliers people who supply raw material to the organization are your primary stakeholders and your other business partners people with or organizations with which you have maybe your joint venture or you're collaborating with them or maybe they're sharing technology or sharing ideas with them they're your business partners and they're also your primary social stakeholders then you have your secondary social stakeholders secondary social stakeholders are government and regulators people who make laws and regulations civic institutions social pressure groups media and academic commentators trade bodies and competitors so these are all examples of your secondary social stake, uh, stakeholders then we have your primary non social stakeholders who are your natural environment just just environment mein aap reh rahe hote future generations and non human 
human species. Now here I would like to give you an example that one of the definitions that I tell my students uh, for corporate social responsibility is that corporate social responsibility is ensuring that your future generations get the same kind of environment that you've got for yourself. So that means that your future generations is, are extremely important for you. Obviously they would be. But then if you want to get the same kind, same kind of environment, mele, so you have to take care now. For example, when you brush teeth, when, you, when, you, when you're brushing your teeth, do you close the tap? How many of you don't? And you'll be surprised to see that there's a huge number still who keep the tap open while brushing their teeth, realizing that we're not a developed country. We have ample water resources. Now, if you research in Pakistan, you'll have hundreds of people who do not have running supply of water. But then again, when you're showering and, you, and when you're putting shampoo on your head, you don't close the shower. What you're doing is you're wasting water. And what you're doing is you are just going that one step ahead in ensuring that your kids and your kids' kids do not get enough water for themselves because today you are wasting water that belongs to them. So that is how your future generation gets affected by the decisions and the actions that you take today. We're not talking corporations, we're just talking you and what you're doing, but then your action is also affecting those people, those future people. And then you have your secondary non-social stakeholders, your environmental pressure groups, and you have NAPA Greenpeace ki example, thi, that's an environmental pressure group. And then you have animal welfare organizations as well. Now you need to understand that all these four classification of stakeholders are interconnected with each other. For example, the farthest of them is your no secondary non-social stakeholders. Phir aapke primary non-social stakeholders aate hain, phir aapke secondary social stakeholders aate hain, and then the closest to the corporation are your primary social stakeholders. So the closest is the primary social stakeholders and the farthest is the secondary non-social stakeholders. And all these stakeholders are interconnected with one another in some way or the other. For example, when we say environmental pressure groups, they're the ones who say environmental degradation uh, against bolte hain or voice raise karte hain. Now what they're doing is they are impacting the environment. Now the environment is going to also have an impact uh, whereby the government can also make, make legislation with reference to protecting the environment because jab ye pressure groups bohut zyada pressure dalenge on issues which are right on issues which are which are so important that they should be protected automatically the government will be making legislation to protect the natural environment and then whatever legislation whatever law whatever regulation that the government makes it will have an impact positive or negative on the investors as well so that basically means that these four different classification of uh, stakeholders are interconnected with one another and they have a relationship with each other and that is what this shows all these these four gray triangles that you see and these four almost rectangles that you see basically represent the different classification of your shareholders and what this particular figure basically says that each of these classifications or each of the stakeholders which are represented by these classifications basically interact with one another in some way or the other. So, it does a positive or negative influence. Hota hai. Legislation ban gai because of the pressures that the environmental groups have exerted, your investor jo hai, wo, he's, he, he, he's going to be happy. If there is a legislation ban gai, which, is, which is very strict and which has resulted in rest restraining the activities of the corporation aapka investor khush nahi hoga so in short whatever these four different groups four different types four different classification of stakeholders are doing it is have it is going to have an impact on on each other's activity and also the corporation now let's just study the various different types of uh, stakeholders i know that you know most of them but we're going to go through them anyways and we're going to go through them very very quickly your first category of stockholders which are your primary social stakeholders are your stockholders investors or your stake uh, or your shareholders now they have the financial stake in the company they're the ones who have uh, provided the financial resources for the company and they have they're the ones who have provided the investment for the company so that means that in individual 
इंडिविजुअल्स का इन इस ग्रुप का फाइनेंशियल स्टेक है कंपनी अच्छी चलती है या कंपनी अच्छी नहीं चलती है द द इन्वेस्टर्स एंड द शेयर होल्डर्स एंड द स्टॉक होल्डर्स आर द वंस हु गोइंग टू बी वर्ड ओवर इट एंड दे इन रिटर्न फॉर देयर फाइनेंशियल स्टेक इन रिटर्न फॉर देयर financial investment they are the ones who demand returns as well they need uh, a return on their investment and they need a good return on their investment because they've taken the risk they've invested the money in a corporation and that's what they want now organizations have to honor this demand this demand of return for, for investment this demand for uh, you know, pr providing them with dividends and profits this is the demand that organizations have to honor because uh, the investors are very very important without which the company would not have the money that it needs the stakes will be different based uh, with based on the type of owners because aapki jo returns hoti hain wo hum pehle bhi padh chuke hain aapke jo शेयर होल्डर्स होते हैं वो डिफरेंट टाइप के होते हैं आपके कॉमन शेयर होल्डर्स भी होते हैं आपके प्रेफर्ड शेयर होल्डर्स भी होते हैं डिपेंडिंग अपॉन कि आप किस टाइप के शेयर होल्डर्स हैं आपका डिविडेंड टाइप भी चेंज हो जाता है आप छोटे स्टेक होल्डर हैं जिसकी कम इन्वेस्टमेंट है एज कम्पेयर टू लार्जर शेयर होल्डर है जिसकी ज्यादा इन्वेस्टमेंट है तब भी आपका स्टेक जो है या रिस्क फैक्टर जो है वो चेंज होता है सो दैट बिकम्स अ वेरी फर्स्ट स्टेक होल्डर जिसको हम शेयर होल्डर या स्टॉक होल्डर कहते हैं एंड दे आर योर प्राइमरी सोशल स्टॉक होल्डर स्टेक होल्डर सॉरी द नेक्स्ट आर योर एम्प्लॉज देर देर हायर्ड बेस्ड ऑन देयर स्किल्स एंड एक्सपर्टीज दैट सिंपल इनफ इन रिटर्न फॉर वर्क दे डिमांड कम्पनसेशन वेन द वर्कर इज गोइंग टू गिव यू वर्क ऑटोमेटिकली द वर्कर इज गोइंग टू डिमांड कम्पनसेशन विच इन विच इज गोइंग टू बी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सैलरी इन द फॉर्म ऑफ वेज इज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ बेनिफिट्स एंड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ इंसेंटिव देर डिफरेंट लेवल्स ऑफ मैनेजमेंट एंड दे आर रिक्वायर्ड टू डू different work for example if you have the top management their purpose is to plan their purpose is to make strategy their purpose is to think abstractly to see ke where the organization is going to be in the future when you talk of middle level manager their purpose is to communicate uh, the decisions taken by the top level managers to the lower level managers their their function is to uh, do resource allocation their function is to talk to people and motivate people to do the work then you have a low level management which is actually uh, involved in doing the nitty gritty details and doing the actual work of the organization daily operations jo hai wo aapki lower level management jo hai wo fulfill karti hai now employees loyalty in return for need compensation the, now the employer or the organization is going to expect employees loyalty in return for the compensation that the employee is going to get for example the salary that the corporation gives to the employee that salary is given to the employee thinking that the employee is going to be loyal to the corporation and that the employee is going to work productively in the organization now once that salary is given automatically us salary ko use karte hue us paise ko use karte hue jo aapka employee hai wo apne needs and wants ko puri karta hai so it's basically agar aap employer aur employee ki relationship dekhein isme bhi dono bande apne apne liye kaam kar rahe hote hain the employer is giving salary because the employer wants some work done and the employer wants some loyalty and the employee is working and being loyal because he gets money with which he fulfills his needs and his wants Uh, problem इधर क्या आती है सूडो कमिटमेंट की वे बाय द एम्प्लॉय एंड द एम्प्लॉय बोथ आर नॉट वॉट दे सीम टू बी द एम्प्लॉय फेक्स लॉयल्टी एंड द एम्प्लॉयर फेक्स हिज कमिटमेंट टूवर्ड्स द एम्प्लॉय तो जब आप फेक कमिटमेंट या फेक लॉयल्टी शो करते हैं तो ऑटोमेटिकली आपको ट्रस्ट इशूज आ जाते हैं यू कॉन्ट ट्रस्ट द अदर पार्टी वेन यू कॉन्ट वेन एन एम्प्लॉय के नॉट ट्रस्ट द एम्प्लॉयर दैन ऑटोमेटिकली मोटिवेशन लेवल कम होगा मुराल कम होगा आप आप सही तरीके से काम नहीं कर सकेंगे और आपकी प्रोडक्टिविटी भी खराब होगी सिमिलरली जब एम्प्लॉयर एम्प्लॉय को ट्रस्ट नहीं कर सकता तो एक्सेसिव चेक्स होंगे एक्सेसिव बैलेंसेज होंगे सेंट्रलाइजेशन होगी आप एम्पावरमेंट पर बिलीव नहीं करेंगे आप इटोनमी पर बिलीव नहीं करेंगे और द एम्प्लॉय माइट फील फ्रस्ट्रेटेड द एम्प्लॉय माइट फील माई माइट फील लैक ऑफ मोटिवेशन रिजल्ट अगेन प्रोडक्टिविटी नहीं होगी सो सोडो कमिटमेंट से बोथ पार्टीज बेसिकली यू हैव अ लूज लूज सिचुएशन विद रेफरेंस टू बोथ द पार्टीज एंड देन एथिकल एजुकेशन शुड कॉरस्पॉन्ड टू देयर लेवल ऑफ एक्शन मीनिंग दैट with since you have different levels in the organization different management levels in the organization you have the lower management and then you have the middle management and then you have the upper level management with respect to each different level in the organization aapki ethical education farak honi chahiye because each level is going to do actions and and do things according to their level jo jo lower level ka banda hai wo lower level 
मैनेजमेंट के ही काम करेगा और उसकी एथिकल एजुकेशन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू हिज वर्क होनी चाहिए सिमिलरली जो मिडिल लेवल मैनेजर है वो अपने लेवल का ही काम करेगा और उसकी एथिकल अंडरस्टैंडिंग और एथिकल एजुकेशन उसके लेवल के मुताबिक होनी चाहिए एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ सो दैट इज वॉट योर एम्प्लॉयज आर एम्प्लॉयज अगेन आर योर प्राइमरी सोशल स्टेक होल्डर्स नेक्स्ट आर योर सप्लायर्स अगेन योर प्राइमरी सोशल स्टेक होल्डर्स दे प्रोवाइड रॉ मटीरियल एंड गेट रिवॉर्डेड बाई गेटिंग कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सो दे प्रोवाइड रॉ मटीरियल टू द बिजनेस एंड द रॉ मटीरियल इज इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर द बिजनेस सो द रिलेशनशिप है बिटवीन द सप्लायर एंड द बिजनेस इज टू साइडेड द सप्लायर इज इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर द बिजनेस बिकॉज द सप्लायर इज सप्लाइंग रॉ मटीरियल टू द बिजनेस विदाउट विच द बिजनेस के नॉट वर्क द बिजनेस इज इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर द सप्लायर बिकॉज द बिजनेस इज रिवॉर्डिंग कॉन्ट्रैक्ट टू द सप्लायर फ्रॉम विच द सप्लायर गेट्स द मनी एंड बिकम्स ऑपरेशनल Now, this with reference to suppliers, long-term relationship and partnership-based approach होना बहुत जरूरी है. The concept that you should have multiple suppliers and you switch from one supplier to another to another to another has changed. Now, corporations want long-term and partnership. based relationships with their suppliers they want long term relationships with their suppliers ek supplier hai acha supplier hai right price right quality ki raw material aapko supply karta hai you would want to stick with that supplier because jitna aapka long term relationship or partnership hota hai utna hi dono parties jo hain wo benefit uh, leti hain again ye relationship long term kaise ho sakta hai ye relationship between the business and the supplier strong kaise ho sakta hai only when there's trust and collaboration between between the suppliers and the businesses now the problem is when parties underplay social responsibility and only focus on profit so jo when we talking this relationship between the suppliers and the businesses problem is that when these parties the corporation and the suppliers underplay the concepts of corporate social responsibility how can they do that for example supplier jo hai uh, ek cheez isliye supply kar ek aisi cheez supply karna chahta hai taaki वो ज्यादा से ज्यादा प्रॉफिट कमाए अच्छा वो कैसे कमा सकता है हाउ कैन सप्लाई अर्न मैक्सिमम प्रॉफिट बाय सप्लाइंग अ लो क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट बिकॉज व्हेन दैट सप्लाई इज गोइंग टू सप्लाई अ लो क्वालिटी प्रोडक्ट ऑटोमेटिकली द प्राइस of that low quality product is going to be less now when the price is going to be less the expenses associated with it are, with it are also going to be less and automatically the profit margin for the supplier is going to go up so in other words agar supplier unethically kaam karna chahe wo kar sakta hai business ko kahega ki ji ek a quality raw material hai supplier usko b quality raw material karega प्राइस उससे इक्वालिटी रॉ मटेरियल की लेगा ऑटोमेटिकली वो उसकी उसका जो प्रॉफिट मार्जिन है सप्लायर का वो बढ़ जाएगा सो पॉइंट है इसके जब ये पार्टीज चाहे वो कॉरपोरेशन हो या बिजनेसेस कॉरपोरेशन बिजनेस या सप्लायर्स हो अगर वो सिर्फ प्रॉफिट्स पर फोकस करेंगे तो इस रिलेशनशिप में बिटवीन द बिजनेस एंड द सप्लायर प्रॉब्लम एंड इश्यूज आ सकते हैं बिकॉज इफ द सप्लायर इज नॉट सप्लाइंग गुड क्वालिटी रॉ मटेरियल टू द बिजनेस ऑटोमेटिकली द प्रोडक्ट दैट द बिजनेस विल मेक विल ऑल्सो बी not of good quality and if the, that product is not of good quality it will never be sold and the company is never going to be profitable now the third kind or the fourth kind of stakeholders that we're going to discuss are your customers now customers are defined as king of business they're the ones without business cannot happen they're the ones without which business cannot succeed ab jitni achhi planning kar le आप जितनी अच्छी स्ट्रेटजी बना ले आपके पास चाहे जितने पैसे हो आपकी चाहे जितनी बड़ी कंपनी हो If your company, if your corporation does not have customers, your business is never going to su- succeed. That's why customers are defined as the king of the business. Now, the older tradition is that the customer make. the right decision to get the best gain so purani soch ye hai ki customer whatever decision that the customer makes the customer makes a decision to get gains whatever gains that he wants to get gains generally kya hote hain in terms of customers satisfaction of needs and wants so customer ek aisa decision leta hai jo ki right decision hoga jo ki uski needs and wants ko satisfy karega so that the customer can gain from that decision that's the older view that people used to believe the new concept is that company success depends upon how closely the customer relationship is monitored so the old view was that customer aata hai customer decision leta hai customer product khareedta customer chala jata hai full stop end of story nothing 
नाउ द न्यू व्यू वेयर्स दैट कस्टमर दुकान में आएगा कस्टमर से आप बात करेंगे कस्टमर से आप इंटरेक्ट करेंगे कस्टमर से आप रिलेशनशिप बनाएंगे कस्टमर आपकी प्रोडक्ट खरीदेगा कस्टमर घर चला जाएगा फिर आप कस्टमर को लिखेंगे कि थैंक यू फॉर द ट्रांजैक्शन फिर दो महीने बाद कॉल करेंगे इफ यू हैविंग एनी प्रॉब्लम विद द प्रोडक्ट फिर चार महीने के बाद कॉल करेंगे कि आपको कोई सर्विस की तो जरूरत नहीं है फिर साल के बाद कॉल करेंगे उसको ईद कार्ड भेज देंगे उससे ग्रीटिंग्स एक्सचेंज करेंगे पॉइंट इज विद विद दिस न्यूअर कॉन्सेप्ट what you're doing is you're not doing a transaction you're not indulging in an exchange you are building a relationship with your customer and that is what is the need of the day to day and that is what is needed and with reference to corporate social responsibility as well what we're doing by using the concepts of csr is that we're building that relationship with the customer we're we're building that strong relationship with the customer so with reference to the new concept you get a more satisfied customer because customer ko lagta hai okay the, the company cares about me the company is thinking about me the next time agar us customer ko ek koi cheez khareedni hai aap automatically ja ke usi jagah se khareedte hain usi company ki product khareedte hain usi business se ja kar purchase karte hain which are which is going to result in more profits for the company so when you keep your customer satisfied Uh, keeping in line with the new concept of having or maintaining a relationship with your customer it is basically the company who is going to benefit because it is basically the company who is going to earn profits uh, uh, th- through this action now, the relationship does not get honored because of the following producers right generally jo hum ye customer relationship ki baat karte hain it does not get honored because of the following things the the producers have the right to make decisions about product offered for sale that is the design in the sale that means ke jo producer hai wo they can make decisions about what type of products will they be offering for sale with respect to ke ji aapne design kaisa karna hai us us uski jo physical shape hai wo kya honi chahiye etc the producer has the right to set price including warranty so the producer is the one jo ke price set karega chahe wo exorbitant ho ya kam ho ya average ho ya right ho but the prices will be set by the producers and warranties guarantees ka bhi decision jo hai wo producer lega now the producer has the right to determine how product will be made available to the customer so wo distribute kaise hogi kitne points se distribute hogi these are the decisions that will also be made by the producers and finally the producers would also have the right to promote how to promote how to uh, ensure that people know about your product will also be done by the producers now it is because of these four different right that this customer relationship sometimes does not get honored because what happens is that in order for you to have a good customer relationship with your customer you have to have the right kind of product at the right price at the right place and it has to be promoted rightly as well however iska matlab hai ki har cheez sahi honi chahiye aur right honi chahiye just honi chahiye fair honi chahiye ethical honi chahiye product achhi quality ke bani chahiye achhi price pe sell honi chahiye properly distribute honi chahiye aur ethically promote honi chahiye problem kya aata hai ki jab hum in charo rights ki baat karte hain producers try to get as much as they can thinking or, or thinking about themselves kyunki wo sirf apne bare mein soch rahe hote hain profitability ke bare mein soch rahe hote hain ya sirf economic transaction ke bare mein soch rahe hote hain in order to have higher profit margins wo shayad perfect quality product nahi banate because bahut achhi quality hogi to automatically uh, company ke profit margins kam honge similarly price reasonable nahi rakhte because wo bahut zyada high price kar dete hain taaki company jo hai uske profit margins so distribution mein bhi issue aa sakta hai promotion mein unethical promotion motion kar sakte hain whereby they are not stating the facts as they should be stated is case mein jab aapki ye rights jo hain jab producer apni rights ko completely fulfill sahi tarike se nahi karta hai to automatically the product that the customer will get will not be of right quality it might not be of right price it might be not it might not be distributed properly or more importantly shayad jo promotion hai wo unethical promotion hai ke the the customer gets turned off by the product now when that happens then this customer relationship is not there anymore then the customer is not going to come to you again and again and again to buy the same product from your company jab ye ho jata hai then that means ki aapka customer relationship bahut weak hai so for in order to companies uh, to have a good customer relationship bahut zaruri hai ke जो प्रोड्यूसर्स हैं वो अपने इन राइट्स को जुडिशली एग्जर्ट करें और जुडिशली उनको पूरा करें हैविंग सेड दैट 
कंज्यूमर या कस्टमर के पास एक बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट पावर है विच इज द पावर टू वीटो वीटो इज बेसिकली टू से नो सो द कंज्यूमर हैव द पावर टू से नो टू बाइंग ए प्रोडक्ट हमें ये प्रोडक्ट नहीं चाहिए द सिंपल सेंटेंस हैज अज इम्प्लीकेशन फॉर कॉरपोरेशन बिकॉज ऑफ द कस्टमर से इज नो Uh, to buying your product that means no sales no sales are going to mean no revenues no revenues are going to mean no profits for the company agar hum sirf transaction term mein baat kare economic term mein baat kare so customer ke paas ye bahut badi power hai aur is yahi jo veto option hai yahi aapke producers ya ya companies ko motivate karti hai ki wo apni in char rights ko sahi tarike se यूज कर सकें द कस्टमर्स कैन स्विच फ्रॉम वन प्रोडक्ट टू अनादर बट दैट डिपेंड्स अपॉन द अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ सिमिलर गुड्स एज वेल एन अदर कस्टमर्स के पास जो ऑप्शन है स्पेशली आज की इन्वायरमेंट में आज की बिजनेसेस में द कस्टमर्स हैव अ वाइड वेराइटी ऑफ सब्सिट्यूट अवेलेबल आप प्रोडक्ट ए नहीं लेना चाहते फॉर सम रीजन मे बी क्वालिटी इज नॉट गुड मे बी प्राइस इज नॉट गुड आप प्रोडक्ट बी पर चले जाते हैं प्रोडक्ट बी आपकी प्रमोशन आपको सही नहीं लगी आप प्रोडक्ट सी पर चले जाते हैं प्रोडक्ट सी नहीं आपको बेहतर लगी आप प्रोडक्ट डी पर चले जाते हैं सो टूडे कंज्यूमर्स हैव अज अमाउंट और लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ सब्सिट्यूट एंड ऑल्टरनेटिव एंड चॉइस इज अवेलेबल फ्रॉम विच दे कैन चूज फ्रॉम विच दे कैन परचेज एंड फ्रॉम विच दे कैन सेटिस्फाई देयर नीड्स एंड सेटिस्फाई देयर वॉन्ट्स एंड अगेन दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट ऑल्सो सॉट ऑफ कंपेल्स द प्रोड्यूसर टू मेक द आइडियल प्रोडक्ट आस्क द राइट प्राइस डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड प्रॉपरली एंड प्रमोटेड प्रॉपरली नाउ द रिलेशनशिप जनरली डिफाइंड द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द कॉरपोरेशन एंड द the customer is generally defined in the way that buyers be aware ke ji corporation se jo karna hai karna hai wo galat bana product bhi banayengi price bhi high charge karengi distribution bhi galat karengi promotion bhi unethical karengi buyers should be aware it becomes a buyer's responsibility to see pehle product ko dekho ki quality achhi hai fir price check karo fir distribution dekho fir compare karo ki ad mein kya kaha tha aur product actually kaisi hai so the concept is ke ji buyers be aware however this buyer be aware a uh, statement is no longer correct why because of consumer rights and consumer awareness today you and me are more aware hame pata hai ki ji jo for example pehle agar aap apni ammi aur us zamane ki baat kare to uh, chinese khano mein aapka ajinomoto bahut dalta tha sab log ajinomoto pehle dalte the fir chinese khana banate the taste acha aata jo chinese ka taste aata hai wo ajinomoto se aata hai that's what people used to say Now the new research says that Nigeria Gino Motor is not good for health, and it might result in different uh, uh, diseases and health issues. As a result of which, people have stopped using a Gino Motor completely. Now that awareness that a Gino Motor is not good. वॉज बिकॉज ऑफ कंज्यूमर अवेयरनेस रिसर्च हुई मीडिया ने पब्लिसाइज किया नेट पर आपने पढ़ा बुक्स पढ़ी पेपर्स पढ़े जर्नल्स पढ़े मैगजीन्स पढ़े एंड यू गॉट टू नो के नाइजी जीनो मोटो इज नॉट गुड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ विच आपने अपना यूजेज जो था जीनो मोटो का वो खत्म कर दिया एंड स्टॉप यूजिंग दैट्स दैट्स वॉट कंज्यूमर अवेयरनेस इज ना यू एंड आई नो कि चीज सही है या नहीं सही एनिमल्स पर जो कॉस्मेटिक्स टेस्ट की गई हैं दे आर नॉट राइट सो वेन एवर आई बाई कॉस्मेटिक look around to see usme statement likhi honi chahiye not tested on animals and then i use it or then i purchase it similarly i think consumer rights ke bhi issues aa gaye hain uh, governments and legislators have made legislations and rules and regulations which protect the consumer rights and this protection ki basis par aapki companies are bound to protect the consumer rights of uh, the consumers and the customers so that consumer ki rights jo hain wo trample na ho so is pure jab hum customer as a stakeholder ki baat karte hain to the concept ke aap customer ko jo de denge wo customer khareed lega is not there anymore the customer is aware of his or her rights the customer is aware of his or her own needs the customer is aware that he or she has a veto power the customer is also aware that he or she have lots of alternatives lots of choices to choose from and then the customer makes a wise decision and would want a long term sustainable relationship with the producer and the business and the corporation taaki ek cheez ek hi business se baar baar khareedi ja sake and that is why now by discussing this ab aapko andaza ho gaya hoga ki customer as a stakeholder kitna important hai if today for some odd reason your customer says no to your product your product your your business is never going to succeed is never going to go forward and will never be prosperous 
The next uh, stakeholder that we will be talking about is competition. Now, when we talk about competition, we talk about free markets. What are free markets? Mein ji kya hai? Free entry, hai, free exit, hai, and equal sharing of information. Hai. Question, what are all these things? That's a question that we're not going to ask. We're going to put it at the side because we've discussed this multiple times. Free markets ke core characteristics ye hai ki ji fixed price honi chahiye aur information sharing with consumers honi chahiye. Price ek jaisi ya fixed ho and you should share all possible relevant information with your consumers and your customers. However, what is happening in these free markets is that there's lots of cheating and there's lots of lying and there's lots of poaching. Jo competition hai, jo multiple companies this market may exist kari hai, wo jhoot bolti hai, ek dusre ke saath bhi, consumers ke saath bhi. Promotion galat karti hai, they're lying uh, uh, in their promotion campaign or wo or unethical practices may be indulge hoti hai. Now the competition affects and gets affected by mutual behavior that can help that can or help the organization's responsiveness. So that basically means that the organizations which compete with each it can either work for the benefit or it can also work against the corporation. How can competition work for the benefit of a corp uh, another corporation? Because if it's positive or healthy competition, hoga, for example, if you talk school ki baat kare, universities, ki baat kare, colleges, ki baat kare, you're in the classroom and there are 10 other people sitting with you. If there is healthy competition between students, then that healthy competition is going to result in motivation for everybody, whereby everybody is going to give his or her best to zyada se zyada marks. Liye On the other hand, if there is same class mein unhealthy competition, hai, then and that unhealthy uh, competition is going to result in lying. Log cheating bhi karenge, log chhoot bhi bolenge, aur log by hoka by crook apna kaam karwana chahenge. So the same thing happens in uh, in, a, in a corporate world as well. If there's healthy competition among businesses, then that's going to result in more innovation, in more creativity, and in more ideas. On the other hand, if there's going to be unhealthy competition in the market, then that is going to result in uh, uh, lying and cheating and unethical practices and, and uh, activities which are not going to be just and which are, which are not going to be right. So that means that competition again can vary or uh, uh, can either positively or negatively affect a business. Positively affect if it's healthy competition or negatively affect if it's healthy competition. The next set of stakeholders that we're going to talk about is government. Large number of factors and institutions that can make and issue laws. So when I government, ki baat karte, it is not the uh, uh, elected government that we're talking about. But when I say government, yes, stakeholders, when we talk about government, ki baat karte hai, it can be a large number of people, organizations, individuals, groups, and institutions that can make and issue laws. So anybody who can make laws and anybody who can issue laws is what we call as government. Now, this, this government jo hoti hai, ye local to international level par hoti hai. So, jo local government aapke liye laws banati hai aur issue karti hai, uh, usko bhi aap government kehte hai. Aur jo international institutions hoti hai, jo ke laws banate hai aur laws ko issue karte hai aur laws ko implement karte hai, usko bhi aap government kehte hai. Since society gives uh, sanctions to businesses, law codify what the society thinks as right or wrong. And we've talked about this as well before we have talked It is the society which has given the permission to the businesses to do what they're doing. Because businesses, they cannot create and make products, goods and services out of thin air. What they're doing is they're utilizing raw material and they're utilizing resources. That resources or those resources belong to the society. So it basically is the society which has given permission to the businesses to do what they're doing. Now if that is true and that is what we believe in, then society is basically represented by the government. So society ke interest ko protect karne ke liye, or society ki likes or dislikes ko safeguard karne ke liye, or honor karne ke liye, governments jo hai, wo laws banati hai, regulations banati hai, codes banati hai, and guidelines banati hai, so that those rules and regulations basically form that, that domain jis ke andar reh kar organizations ko, businesses ko or corporations ko kaam karna padta hai. So that is why jo aapki government hai, that becomes extremely important. With reference to the government relationship, the government 
as a representative of society trying to regulate businesses and facilitating business. So government ka purpose sirf ek side nahi hai. Government ka purpose sirf ye nahi hai ki businesses ko constraint kiya jai, keeping in mind the, the happiness of the society. Government ka kaam sirf ye nahi hai ki businesses par uh, bhoat zada rules and regulations apply kiya jai because the society wants it. Government ka kaam twofold hai. The government is looking after the interests of the society by making rules and regulations that sort of constrain uh, the businesses and it is the right or it is the uh, duty of the government as well to facilitate businesses. Facilitate kaise karenge? Subsidy provide karke facilitate karegi. Jo aapke free tax zones hote hain, wo de kar government aapke businesses ko facilitate karegi. Ya aap se reduce tax le kar government aapke businesses ko karegi. Import duty kam kar degi aapke raw material par, to government aapko facilitate karegi. Ya trade free zones ki hum baat karte hain, to government aapko facilitate karti hai. So don't ever think that jab hum government as a stakeholder baat karte hain, to government ka kam sirf aur sirf so society ki well-being ko dekhte huye businesses ko restrain karna hai ya constrain karna hai government ka kaam utna hi important hai ya government ka ye kaam ki ji wo businesses ko facilitate kare that is as important as safeguarding the interests of the society the second is that the government dependent upon the economic prosperity and the economy is run by the business so with reference to the government corporation relationship it but the Samaj Bangi that the government facilitates the corporation. The second aspect is that the businesses are extremely important for the government. The government cannot survive without businesses because the future of the government or the well-being of the government is dependent upon the prosperity of the economy. If the economy is prosperous, automatically government is doing well. If the economy is not prosperous, the, the, the government is not doing well. The prosperity of the economy or the economy is basically run by the businesses. Businesses come karte hain to aapki economy ke pahiye jo hain, wo chalte hain. So again, a cycle. Government is going to be good if the economy is going to be good. The economy is being run by businesses. That means that the government and the businesses are related to each other or have a relationship with each other. So that means that it is not that businesses that government It works the other way around as well. There's another side to the picture as well. The government can also not survive without businesses. So that is why corporation or government ka jo relationship is very strong. Ho jata hai. And then sometimes government is also a competition for businesses as well. There are many products that businesses are making. Wo government ke multiple offices and multiple uh, uh, jo ministries hoti hain, wo bhi wohi jeans hain bana rahe For example, aap Pakistan Tourism Development ke through bhi swad dekh sakte hain, ya Gilgit dekh sakte hain, ya northern areas mein ja sakte hain, aur aap jo hain, uh, kya kehte hain, uh, uske privately bhi ye tourism ko dekh sakte hain. Agar aap PDDC ke through dekhenge, to government of Pakistan ko fayda hoga. Agar aap kisi private tourism agency ke through dekhenge, to us private tourism agency ko fayda in short, the government is also competing uh, with the businesses in terms of resources, in terms of customers, and in terms of other things as well. So, when we talk government or corporation ke relationship, ki baat karenge, this is what we are going to talk about. And in this way, they relate to each other. The last stakeholders, uh, I know that we have done, and we have seen the stakeholders ki classification, but there were many of them. But this is our last stakeholder type. Hoga because uh, uh, these are the few important stakeholders that we're discussing. The last one is society and community. Now they include not-for-profit or non-profit uh, non organizations. They also include non-government organizations. They also include charities. They also include religious groups and pressure groups. So when we talk society or community, ki baat karte hai, is mein ye sare groups jo hai, wo include hote hai. Now, what do we mean by society, community, not-for-profit organizations, non-government organizations, pressure groups, religious communities and all? What they're doing is they represent the voice and needs of individual stakeholders. May or aap, is kamra mein aake chikhta rengi, chikhta rengi, koi hamaari baat nahi sunega. 
لیکن جب ہم ان نوٹ فار پروفٹ آرگنائزیشن کے پاس جا کر اپنی کنسرن بتاتے ہیں اور پھر یہ نوٹ فار پروفٹ آرگنائزیشن جا کر آگے گورنمنٹ کو یا لیجسلیٹرس کو یا اور لوگوں کو ہم یا کارپوریشن کو ہماری کنسرن بتاتے ہیں تو آٹومیٹکلی اس کا امپیکٹ فرق ہوتا ہے جس کے جی ایک بندہ چلائے تو کوئی فرق نہیں پڑا لیکن اگر دس لوگ چلائیں تو پرابلم ہو جاتی ہے اندر ویری ریلیونٹ ایگزامپل وچ مائٹ وچ یو وڈ بی ایبل ٹو ریلیٹ ود اٹس سڑک پہ کتنے لوگ چل رہے ہوتے ہیں لیکن انڈیویجولی یہاں سے کوئی چلتا گزرتا چلا جائے گا آئی ون ناٹ ایون لک ٹوائس کہ وہ کیا کرا ہے لیکن اگر ایک دم سے یہاں پہ دس لوگ جمع ہو جائیں گے تو پھر میں کھڑے ہو کر دیکھوں گی کہ اچھا یہ کیا کریں کوئی پرابلم ہے کوئی مسئلہ ہے کہنا ہیلپ کہنا ناٹ ہیلپ سو دا سیم تھنگ ہیپنس ہیئر از ویل کہ میری اور آپ کی انڈیویجول وائس شاید کچھ نہ کر سکے لیکن جب یہ انڈیویجول وائس آپ کی ان سوسائٹی اور کمیونٹی گروپس کے تھرو آگے جاتی ہے تو آٹومیٹکلی بہت سارے لوگوں کی وائسز کمبائن ہو جاتی ہیں اینڈ جب بہت سارے لوگوں کی وائسز کمبائن ہو جاتی ہیں تو بہت آواز آتی ہے اینڈ دیٹ وائس اینڈ دیٹ کنسرن از بیسکلی ریپرزینٹیڈ بائی دیز آرگنائزیشن ٹو دی کارپوریشن اینڈ ٹو دی لیجسلیٹرس تاکہ پراپرلی کام ہو سو دیز آر دا ویریس ٹائپ آف اسٹیک ہولڈرس دیٹ یو ہیو ود ریفرنس ٹو دا ود ود ریفرنس ٹو دا ویریس کلاسیفیکیشن آف اسٹیک ہولڈرس دیٹ ویو ڈن تو نیکسٹ از دیٹ وی نیڈ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دا امپیکٹ اینڈ ڈلیمس آف بزنس بزنس بڑا مشکل کام ہے ایوری بڈی کانٹ ڈو ایٹ میں میں اگر آپ مجھ سے پوچھیں گے جی بزنس ایک دم سے میں آئی گو بیک بزنس آئی ڈونٹ تھنک سو بیکاز There's so many issues. I, I'm not that I'm against doing business. It's, it's very good. But then you have to be mentally prepared for so many things. Continuous change, continuous risk. For some people, it's motivating. For others, it's not. But whatever the case is, we need to understand the impact and dilemmas of doing business. Now, up till now, the process of development pursued capital formation and raising GNP in the belief that the mysterious hand would ensure the fair distribution of gains. سو جو مسٹیریس ہینڈ کی بات ہے یہ آپ کو اکنامکس والوں کو بہت فیملیئر لگے گی سو اب تک یا وین وی ٹاک ناؤ دا بیسک تھرسٹ آف ایوری تھنگ واز دیٹ وٹ ایور دا بزنس از ڈو وٹ ایور اکنامک ٹرانسیکشنس دیٹ دے آر ڈوئنگ وٹ ایور اکنامک ایکٹیویٹی دیٹ دے ڈوئنگ دا پرائمری پرپز آف دیٹ اکنامک ایکٹیویٹی از ٹو انکریز کیپٹل فارمیشن زیادہ سے زیادہ پیسہ بنایا جائے وی نیڈ ٹو ہیو امپروو جی ڈی پی این جی این پی In the belief that when we'll have enough money and we'll, when we'll have enough capital formation and when we'll have good GNP and GDP, automatically by some, some mysterious hand, the, the good that that, that capital formation had created, yeah, the benefit that that capital formation had created, they will automatically be transferred down or you have fair distribution of gains. Ho so that was the belief before. کہ جی آپ اپنی اکنامک ایکٹیویٹی کرتے رہیں آپ کیپٹل فارمیشن کرتے رہیں آپ اچھی جی ڈی پی دیں آپ اچھا جی این پی دیں اور آٹومیٹکلی آپ کی آپ کی جو اوور آل اکانومی ہے ایوری بڈی ان دا سوسائٹی از گوئنگ ٹو گین فرام دیٹ گڈ جی ڈی پی گڈ جی این پی اینڈ گڈ کیپٹل فارمیشن ہاو ایور دا پوائنٹ از کہ جو پیسہ ہے یہ تو ہم بار بار بات کر چکے کہ افلوئنس جو ہے یا جو منی ہے یا جو مانیٹری ٹرمس ہیں دے کین ناٹ بی دا گول فار دا سوسائٹی دے کین ناٹ بی دا آبجیکٹو آف دا سوسائٹی ہاں دے کین بی ون آف دی گولس آف دا سوسائٹی بٹ دے کین ناٹ بی دی الٹیمیٹ گول آف دا سوسائٹی کارپوریشنس ہیو ٹو ریکگنائز دیٹ فلاسفی آف ایم ٹی پلینٹی از ناٹ انف دے ہیو ٹو ریئلائز کہ جی اب آپ کو یہ سوچنا پڑے گا آپ کو اپنی سوسائٹی کے بارے میں سوچنا پڑے گا یو ول نیڈ ٹو ریئلائز دیٹ دا ایم ٹی پلینٹی فلاسفی کے بارے میں آپ کو سوچنا پڑے گا آپ کو دیکھنا پڑے گا کہ آپ کی سوسائٹی کو کیا چاہیے دے کین بی ادر انٹینجبل تھنگس دیٹ دا سوسائٹی کین نیڈ ادر دین منی منی از ٹینجبل بٹ مے بی دا سوسائٹی نیڈس ٹرسٹ ٹرسٹ از ان ٹینجبل سو آپ کو سوسائٹی کی ادر نیڈس کے بارے میں جو کہ ان ٹینجبل نیڈس ہیں جو کہ نان مانیٹری نیڈس ہیں آپ کو کارپوریشنس کو اس کے بارے میں بھی سوچنا پڑے گا اینڈ ان ود رسپیکٹ اگر آپ انٹرسپیکٹولی بھی دیکھیں دا کارپوریشن وڈ ہیو ٹو تھنک اباؤٹ کہ جی ان ایڈیشن ٹو منی واٹ ایلس از دا کارپوریشن وانٹ اس میں ٹرسٹ بھی ہونا چاہیے اس میں ویلیو سسٹم بھی ہونا چاہیے اس میں ایتھیکل اینڈ مورل اسٹینڈرڈس بھی ہونا چاہیے بزنس از ہیو ٹو ورک فار دا فزیکل اینڈ اموشنل نیڈس آف دا پیپل اینڈ دیٹ دیٹ وڈ ورک انٹرنلی ایز ویل ایز ایکسٹرنلی بیکاز دا بزنس از وڈ ہیو ٹو کیپ ان مائنڈ کہ اٹ از ناٹ دا منی وچ موٹیویٹس دیر آر ادر فیکٹرز اٹانمی امپاورمنٹ ٹرسٹ ٹروتھ فلنس یہ ساری چیزیں جو ہیں یہ موٹیویٹ کرتی ہیں اینڈ دے وڈ ہیو ٹو ورک فار دا فزیکل اینڈ ایموشنل نیڈس آف پیپل یو نیڈ ٹو ریئلائز ہے دیٹ فزیکل نیڈس جو ہوتی ہیں انڈیویجول کی دے آر فلفلڈ بائی منی 
बट जो इमोशनल नीड्स होती हैं दे कैन नेवर बी फुलफिल्ड बाय मनी उसके लिए आपको कुछ एक्स्ट्रा इंट्रेंसिक रिवॉर्ड्स देने पड़ेंगे सो कॉरपोरेशन के लिए बहुत ज्यादा जरूरी है कि वो इंट्रेंसिक रिवॉर्ड्स के बारे में सोचें और फिजिकल एज वेल एज इमोशनल नीड्स को फुलफिल करने के बारे में सोचें द कॉरपोरेशन के लिए द बेस्ट ऑप्शन इज इशूज या ऑफ ट्रस्ट एंड वैल्यूज एंड हैव ओपन डायरेक्टेड सिस्टम वर्सेज क्लोज इंट्रोपिक सिस्टम सो अगर आपने फिजिकल एंड इमोशनल नीड्स ऑफ पीपल को फुलफिल करना है एंड वेन एस ए पीपल दीज पीपल आर इंटरनल टू दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एज वेल एज एक्सटर्नल टू दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन देन द कॉरपोरेशन हैज टू गेट ओवर इशूज ऑफ ट्रस्ट एंड वैल्यूज द कॉरपोरेशन हैव टू हैव अ वेरी स्ट्रॉग नेटवर्क ऑफ ट्रस्ट एंड अ वेरी स्ट्रॉग सेंस ऑफ वैल्यूज बिकॉज अगर ये ट्रस्ट और वैल्यूज जो हैं ये जब स्ट्रॉग होंगी ओनली देन द कॉरपोरेशन विल बी एबल टू फुलफिल द इमोशनल नीड्स ऑफ पीपल बिकॉज इमोशनल नीड्स के लिए ट्रस्ट बहुत जरूरी है देर इज लैक ऑफ ट्रस्ट इन द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द कॉरपोरेशन एंड द स्टेक होल्डर्स देन द कॉरपोरेशन विल नेवर बी एबल टू फुलफिल द इमोशनल नीड्स ऑफ द स्टेक होल्डर्स द फर्स्ट थिंग इज दैट यू शुड हैव uh we uh, should have the right trust or the right level of trust and you should have a good uh, sense of uh, or or good system of or, or a good value system in your organization the next thing is that organizations should have open directed systems versus closed entropic systems entropic ka jo word hai humne thermodynamics se liya hai and and uh, closed entropic systems are those systems jo ke फीडबैक इंकरेज नहीं करते विच आर कम्प्लीटली क्लोज वन द सिस्टम इज गोइंग टू बी क्लोज दे कैन बी नो इनपुट इन टू द सिस्टम दे इज गोइंग टू बी नो दे आर गोइंग टू बी नो मोर आइडियाज नो मोर क्रिएटिविटी नो इनोवेशन इन द सिस्टम वन दे इज गोइंग टू बी नो इनोवेशन इन द सिस्टम दैन सिस्टम बंद बंद होते होते बिल्कुल खत्म क्लोज हो जाएगा डिसीजन मेकिंग सही नहीं होगी क्रिएटिविटी नहीं होगी प्रोडक्ट अच्छी नहीं बनेंगी नई प्रोडक्ट्स नहीं बनेंगे एंड इवेंचुअली द सिस्टम इज गोइंग टू सर्ट ऑफ क्रैश एंड डाई एंड बी एक्सटेंट एक्सटेंट as opposed to a closed entropic system you have an open directed system which is an open system feedback aa rahi hai feedback ja rahi hai input aa rahi hai output ja rahi hai aap logo se stakeholders se environment ke sath interact kar rahe hain aur us interaction ki base par aapki organization mein creativity bhi zyada hogi aapki organization mein innovation bhi zyada hogi aapki organization mein ideas bhi aayenge and when i say ideas to not necessarily ke ji products ki ideas ideas can be about anything ideas can be about how to resolve a particular issue properly or how to resolve a particular problem efficiently so आप जितने आपके ज्यादा आइडियाज आते हैं उतनी प्रॉबिबिलिटी कि आपकी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अच्छे तरीके से चीजों को रिजॉल्व और सॉल्व कर सकेगी ऑटोमेटिकली इंक्रीज हो जाता है सो फिजिकल और इमोशनल नीड्स के लिए ट्रस्ट और वैल्यू सिस्टम का होना जरूरी है और ओपन डायरेक्टेड सिस्टम्स का होना जरूरी है नॉट टू बी मीनिंगफुल द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन शुड हैव एन ऑनस्ट असेसमेंट ऑफ इंटरनल एंड एक्सटर्नल एनवायरमेंट सी के जी इंटरनल एक्सटर्नल एनवायरमेंट क्या सॉट एनालिसिस बहुत अच्छा सा होना चाहिए थ्रेट्स क्या है अपॉर्चुनिटीज क्या है एंड विद रेफरेंस टू थ्रेट्स एंड अपॉर्चुनिटीज एंड कीपिंग इन माइंड द ओपन डायरेक्टेड सिस्टम यू शुड लिसन टू आइडियाज यू शुड इंकरेज पीपल टू गिव यू मोर आइडियाज एंड जब आप इंकरेज की बात करेंगे और आइडियाज की बात करेंगे देन यू शुड बी ओपन टू ऑल दोज आइडियाज एज वेल आइडियाज का या क्रिएटिविटी का या इनोवेशन का कोई फायदा नहीं है अगर आप क्लोज माइंड के साथ उनको सुने बिकॉज क्लोज माइंड इज गोइंग टू रिजिस्ट चेंज बिकॉज वट एवर यू थॉट योर सेल्फ यूल थिंक दैट दैट्स द बेस्ट थिंग दैट कुड हैपन नाउ वंस यूर लिस्टिंग टू आइडियाज एंड एंड एडवाइस एंड वट पीपल आर सेंग इन एन ओपन डायरेक्टेड सिस्टम यूर ऑल्सो ओपन टू चेंज आप चेंज के बारे में भी सोचते हो या आप चेंज को इनकरेज करते हो जब आप चेंज की बात करेंगे तो आप एक्सट्रीम्स को अवॉइड करेंगे टोटल कन्फॉर्मिटी को भी अवॉइड करेंगे जहां पर सब आपके साथ एग्री करें जो आपने कहा सर वो सही है और टोटल डिसरिगार्ड को भी अवॉइड करेंगे जहां पर एवरीबडी इज सेंग थिंग्स विच आर अगेंस्ट ईच अदर जहां पर कंप्लीट कॉन्फ्लिक्ट है आप आप सोल्यूशन फाइंड ही नहीं कर सकते चेंज मीन्स की यू फाइंड द मिडल वे आप आइडियाज को इनोवेशन uh, को ऐसे गाइड करते हो कि वो आपको अच्छे अच्छे आइडियाज दे सो दैट आप अपने इंटरनल एक्सटर्नल एनवायरमेंट एनालिसिस करके उनका फायदा उठा सको एंड देन डाइवर्सिटी इन आइडियाज इज इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर सी एस आर टू वर्क इंटरनली एंड एक्सटर्नली एज वेल यू नो वट डाइवर्सिटी इज राइट और सेम कॉन्सेप्ट को अगर आप आइडियाज पर अप्लाई कर दें वो सी एस आर के लिए बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है बिकॉज मोर डाइवर्सिटी इन आइडियाज वुड मीन 
more ideas, more different kind of ideas. That means ki aap, aap, aap systems ko se study kar sakenge. And then again, so diversity of ideas hoti hai. Then you start, then you, what you do is you're questioning each other. And when you're questioning each other, then automatically the probability that each one of us will indulge in an ethical behavior automatically increases because agar aap koi galat kaam karenge aur main aapke saath disagree kar rahi hongi, to main kahungi ki ji aap galat kaam kar rahi na kare. And then you might think once, you might think twice, you might think three times and might not even do that wrong thing. So that is why diversity of ideas is extremely important for CSR to work internally and externally as well. Now, the above mentioned system, which we have talked about, that you should encourage change, change ko karna chahiye, or extremes, ki baat nahi karni chahiye, or threats and opportunities, ko dekhna chahiye. Now, the above mentioned system needs to be driven by professionals. So, I know that professionals in terms of expertise, in terms of knowledge, in terms of wisdom. Hote hain. Now, these professionals would have associated with values and ideals and intertwined with social well-being as well. So these professionals' ke ideas and values are very important hongi because professionals' ke values and ideas will be the one who will be transmitted in the organization as well. And they would also be intertwined with social well-being as well because if the professional is going to think that this is my organization, it is the right work and it is the right work and it is the right work and it is the right work, then the organization will do that. On the other hand, if the professional thinks no profit making, money making and quantitative outcomes are the only things that we are going to think about, then automatically your organization will think about that at the end. As professionals cannot have stereotype meanings of entities, that means that you need to use knowledge to diagnose, infer, analyze, and then offer solutions. That means that we do not expect professionals to take things as they are. Okay, ji, acha, ye ham soch kar aaye the, ye ham 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 we we hamne ye definition padi hai CSR ki. To be ye definition hai CSR ki, humne isko aise implement karna nahi. That does not make you a professional. A professional is going to use his knowledge. A professional is going to use her expertise. A professional is going to use his or her wisdom to diagnose, see ke cha kya masla hai. Usko analyze karega, usko infer karega, and then offer solution. And then maybe come up with a new definition of of, of CSR. And that's why when we say ke ji, aapko apna khud magnetic north find karna hai, ya aapko apni khud definition of CSR find karni hai, ya apne khud dekna hai, ki aap kitna zada ya kitna kam CSR activities ko implement कर सकते हैं। That's where the role of a professional comes because if you're a professional, आप चीजों को as they are नहीं लेते, आप predetermined views के साथ चीजों को या काम नहीं करते। आप सोचते हो, समझते हो, देखते हो, problem को find करते हो और फिर आगे चलते हो। That is what makes you a professional. Now the danger with professionals are that they tend to misuse their specialized knowledge. जब मैंने आपको हैकर्स की बात की, they are all professionals, सबके पास डिग्री भी most probably होगी, knowledge, expertise, experience बहुत होगा, but misuse of power जो है ना वो बहुत मसला करती है, and then you need to realize that professionals are going to have extreme levels of powers, extreme amount of powers, because अब corporations की बात करें, इतनी बड़ी-बड़ी corporation, huge amount of financial resources available to them, so the professionals can have the tendency to misuse them, and यहाँ पर आपका सबसे बड़ा मसला है, because अगर आपका professional सही है, सही काम कर रहे थे कभी काम कर रहे तो that feeling is transmitted throughout the organization. On the other hand, if your if your professional or the top management management or the leaders are misusing their powers, तो automatically आपकी पूरी organization में problems आती हैं. And again जब हम professionals की बात करेंगे तो हम पहले भी दस दफा बात कर चुके कि professionals को society trust करती है professionals are the ones who make up a corporation and corporation को society trust करती है and generally it is the individuals that make organizational value because organization तो एक 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 entity है जो के जो के automated जो के जो which is an artificial person remember that means कि कोई और उसके लिए सोच रहा है और कोई और उसके लिए काम कर रहा है। Organization in itself cannot do anything. That means that the organizations are made up of people. Agreed. People would have certain values. Agreed. If the value of the people are good, automatically the values of the organizations are going to be nice. If the value of the people who are running the organization are not right, are not correct, are not good, are not ethical, automatically आपका जो 
बिजनेस है वो भी अनएथिकल ही होगा वो भी अनजस्ट एक्टिविटीज में इन्वॉल्व होगा वो भी इमोरल एक्टिविटीज में इन्वॉल्व होगा सो दैट इज वेन वी से कि जी आपके डिलेमज ऑफ बिजनेस क्या है आपके यही सारे डिलेमज हैं किस तरीके से बिजनेस को मैनेज करेंगे आप सिर्फ ये सोचेंगे कि हम प्रॉफिट कमाएं सोसाइटी खुद बहुत ठीक हो जाएगी या हम ये सोचेंगे कि हमने खुद सोसाइटी के लिए करना है हम प्रोफेशनल्स की बात करते हैं हम हम प्रोफेशनल्स की इम्पोर्टेंस की बात करते हैं हम ये समझते हैं कि प्रोफेशनल की वैल्यूज जो हैं वो बहुत ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है विद रिस्पेक्ट टू के जी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की क्या वैल्यूज होंगी बिकॉज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन की सिर्फ वही वैल्यूज होंगी जो कि प्रोफेशनल्स की वैल्यूज हैं बिकॉज इट इज अ प्रोफेशनल विच मेक्स दी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो दैट इज द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ दैट ना द इम्पैक्ट अगेन इम्पैक्ट एंड डिलेमज ऑफ बिजनेस आई एम जस्ट समराइजिंग वट आई एव जस्ट डन सो फार टू बी मीनिंगफुल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैव टू मेक लाइफ reverent and just this requires an honest assessment of the internal and external environment so that the realities can be matched so this is what i've been trying to say to you i'm just summarizing my discussion now that organizations ko meaningful rehne ke liye it is important ke wo wo ye kaam kare which are just wo aise kaam kare which are just and ethical and aise right kaam karne ke liye right activities mein involve hone ke liye ऑनस्ट असेसमेंट जरूरी है इंटरनल इन्वायरमेंट की और एक्सटर्नल इन्वायरमेंट की इंटरनल इन्वायरमेंट और एक्सटर्नल इन्वायरमेंट में आपकी स्ट्रेंथ्स वीकनेसेस अपॉर्चुनिटीज एंड थ्रेट्स आ जाएंगे एंड विद रेफरेंस टू सॉर्ट आपको ये देखना पड़ेगा कि आप, आप आपको लोगों से एडवाइसिस लेनी पड़ेंगी आपको ओपन डायरेक्टेड सिस्टम्स की, की तरफ जाना पड़ेगा और क्लोज इन ट्रॉपिक सिस्टम से दूर जाना पड़ेगा आपको चेंज मैनेजमेंट को एक्सेप्ट करना पड़ेगा आपको एक्सट्रीम्स को अवॉइड करना पड़ेगा और आपको ऐसे काम करना पड़ेगा जो कि जहां पर आप अपनी अपॉर्चुनिटीज को अपनी स्ट्रेंथ के साथ मैच कर सके सो दैट सबका फायदा हो इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ प्रोफेशनल्स प्रोफेशनलिज्म इज एसोसिएटेड विद सर्टन वैल्यूज एंड आइडियल्स इट इज इंट्रिकेटली इंटरट्वाइंट विद द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सोशल वेलबींग एज दैट इज द प्री रेक्ट फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ सर्वाइवल इंडिविजुअल और ग्रुप सो दैट बेसिकली मीन्स इज दैट इंडिविजुअल वैल्यूज आर डायरेक्टली रिलेटेड टू द वैल्यूज ऑफ कॉर्पोरेशन कॉर्पोरेशन की अपनी इनट नेचुरली कोई वैल्यू नहीं होती एक सीनियर मैनेजमेंट है उसकी एक वैल्यू होगी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन उसको फॉलो करेगी वो सीनियर मैनेजमेंट बदल जाएगा दूसरा सीनियर मैनेजमेंट में बंदा आ जाएगा उसकी डिफरेंट सेट ऑफ वैल्यूज होंगी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑटोमेटिकली उन सेट ऑफ वैल्यूज को फॉलो करना करना शुरू हो जाएगी सो बेसिकली इट इज द सेट ऑफ वैल्यूज दट बिलोंग्स टू द प्रोफेशनल दैट आर अडोप्टेड बाय द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सो बेसिकली आपकी जो इंडिविजुअल भी सेंस ऑफ वैल्यू है अगर वो ऐसी सेंस ऑफ वैल्यू है जहां पर वो सोशल वेल बींग को भी अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी समझता है जहां पर वो सोसाइटी के बेटरमेंट को भी अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी समझता है जहां पर वो समझता है कि मैं पॉवर्टी को खत्म कर सकता हूँ एजुकेशन के लिए काम कर सकता हूँ एनवायरमेंट डिग्रेडेशन को बेहतर कर सकता हूँ तो ऑटोमेटिकली आप वो 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 इंडिविजुअल जो है वो ऑर्गेनाइजेशन में जाएगा ऑर्गेनाइजेशन भी इन्हीं लाइंस पर सोचेगी और वो ज्यादा सोशली रिस्पॉन्सिबल होगी हेंस इट इज एक्सट्रीमली इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर प्रोफेशनल्स टू थिंक अबाउट द सोशल वेलफेयर बिकॉज दैट इज वन ऑफ द प्री रेक्ट ऑफ सर्वाइवल ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स एंड फॉर ग्रुप्स बिकॉज अगर सोसाइटी नहीं होगी अगर सोशल सेटअप नहीं होगा अगर आज हम सोसाइटी खत्म कर देते हैं आज पाकिस्तान खत्म हो जाता अल्लाह ना करे दैन मेरी और आपकी एग्जिस्टेंस खत्म आई एम अ पाकिस्तानी आई एम अ पाकिस्तानी बिकॉज आई लिव इन पाकिस्तान आई एम अ पाकिस्तानी बिकॉज पाकिस्तान इज देयर बट अगर अल्लाह ना करे कुछ पाकिस्तान को होता है तो नाइल बी ए नो बटी एंड सेम थिंग्स अगर हम सोसाइटी को खत्म कर दें सोशल वेलबींग्स के कॉन्सेप्ट के अगेंस्ट चले जाए तो फिर सोसाइटी नहीं तो फिर इंडिविजुअल्स नहीं इंडिविजुअल्स नहीं तो ग्रुप्स नहीं ग्रुप्स नहीं तो एम्प्लॉयज नहीं एम्प्लॉयज नहीं तो मैनेजमेंट नहीं मैनेजमेंट नहीं तो अपर मैनेजमेंट नहीं अपर मैनेजमेंट नहीं तो कॉरपोरेशन नहीं सो पॉइंट इज दट एवरी थिंग इज इंटर कनेक्टेड विद ईच अदर आप आप बेसिक से शुरू करेंगे सोसाइटी अच्छी तो लोग अच्छे लोग अच्छे तो एम्प्लॉय अच्छे एम्प्लॉय अच्छे तो वर्कर्स अच्छे वर्कर अच्छे तो मैनेजमेंट अच्छी एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फॉर सो इट इट बिकम्स दैट इट इज एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर professionals to have the right set of values and set to have uh, the right set of ideals because and they need to be intertwined with the social well being of the society so that the society in general can sort of uh, flourish and be good 
Now, for our very last slide and to finish off the lecture today, we just want to talk about the various different needs that the organization has. And some of them are not very, uh, they're at opposing ends as well. For example, the organization needs to hold together because when everybody is going to come together, work together, then will goals accomplish. Honge. On the other hand, the organization needs to be different, different in terms of the product that they're offering. Similarly, the organization needs to conform. And on the other hand, the organization needs to differ as well. Because point is that if conformity is very much, then there will be a problem. If differences are very much, then there will be a problem. If conformity is very much, then innovation will be finished. If differences are very much, then conflict will be very much, then chaos will be very much in the organization. Mein hoga. The organization needs to seek convergence. And the organization needs to seek divergence as well. The organization through regulatory processes and the organization should have thorough innovative processes. That means that the organization ki ye sari needs bhi hain aur ye sari needs bhi hain. And the organization has to find just the right mix for these uh, needs to be fulfilled. Because kisi bhi extreme par agar organization chali jati hai, to wo uske liye problem ho jata hai. So with respect to the needs that the organization has, the organization needs to find the right kind of mix, the right kind of balance between all these needs so that the organization's objectives can be achieved. And now, at this point in time, after almost completing chapter number three, when I say organizational objectives, I don't only mean uh, profit making. I mean other objectives with respect to societies and communities as well. So I guess that's enough for today. We're going to end our lecture number nine right here. Uh, quick recap, do you want that? Very quickly. We're talking about stakeholders theory in chapter number three. We talked about stakeholders and taxonomy ki baat ki, classifications ki baat ki, stakeholders ki, relationship of stakeholders ki humne baat ki. And then we talked about ke ji, aapka uh, social dilemmas ya business dilemmas kya hote hain, uh, businesses kya, kya sochte hain, kaise sochte hain, professionals ka kya usme role hota hai, kaisa role hota hai. Or aapka business, professionals se humari expectations kya hai. And then finally we ended our lecture with the thought that you have different needs and you have to balance your needs and you have to fulfill your needs so that the organization can, um, can sort of uh, fulfill its responsibilities, be it the economic responsibility, be it the legal responsibility, be it the uh, moral responsibility, be it the ethical responsibility, or be it the discretionary responsibility. So with this in mind, I would like to say goodbye. Until next time, Allah Hafiz.